Hello everybody, and just here and welcome back to episode 3 of Princess Principle. I'm glad, looking at the uh, initial frame, that we are starting off exactly where we left off, at the top of the roof, meeting of uh, Andre and the princess. And we know that Princess knows Andre or Charlotte, as she called her. So I'm glad that there is continuity. That uh, it's not like the switch from the first episode to the second episode, where we uh, basically started a completely new story. Uh, yeah, I I'm glad it's a continuity and not a uh, villain of the week or mission of the week kind of deal. Where should I put it? You can see it in the in the reflection. Whatever. In the last episode, we learned uh, how it all began. That Anje and uh, that other girl, whose name I forgot, <laughs> were sent across the wall to a different school to infiltrate it, apparently. And to switch places with the princess to infiltrate the country but it seems that princess has plans of her own she wants to become a queen and she will need help of a foreign power to achieve that goal i really like the intrigue it creates you know it's something uh, it's something nice yeah, I should look presentable in front of the camera. It's hard seeing how I'm mirrored in the OBS window, <laughs> but I have to do. Anything else that's worth mentioning? Not really, besides the fact that we discovered the sound designer, uh, the sound director, not designer, sound director for this series is the same as sound director for Yojo Senki, which really does check out, because the quality of sound in both series is absolutely top-notch. I think... I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it for a summary of the previous episode. So, uh, we're gonna start this episode soon, after I tell you that you can watch those episodes early uh, if you support me on Patreon. I release them one week early, in there. <laughs> I don't know what else I wanted to say. So, um, without further ado, I'm wearing my headphones, because it's something you have to experience with headphones. Uh, using the exact same subs, those are... Let me check. Let me check real quick. Akihito subs. Nothing, uh, nothing changes there. So, uh, my picture is jumping. I hope it won't be visible in the recording. And it stopped jumping as soon as I switched to the OBS scene. So, uh, let's hope it's gonna stay that way. And we're gonna start episode 3 of Princess Principle in 3, 2, 1, now. Oh. So Andre wanted to get across the wall to meet the princess, perhaps. And uh, why was she on the other side in the first place? Oh, that's why. Okay. She wants to become the queen. Yeah. Yeah. They were split as children or something. Oh, that's her plan. Not to escape together, but to bring the country together. 
so that they don't have to like live on the run or hide. That's a much more permanent solution. I'll have to give her that. Damn, that shot. This lighting. And we're getting the OP. I waited for this moment. Kinda reminds me of the uh, OP of the second season of uh, Kaguya, Th the very beginning that is, not the rest, but it does. So now there's only the shinobi girl left. I wonder how we're gonna meet her. Hmm. The bombing of London. Now we're getting the background on the flying technology, I guess, more or less. No, we're just getting a reiterated history of the world. Case 2. So that confirms my suspicion that episode 1 was really just a prologue. Yeah. That much is true, but you don't know the whole story. That is also true. Yeah, exactly. Reason to be friends. <laughs> A spy club. Yeah. And a secret wall, apparently. Full of weapons. <laughs> because of course that would be a thing in a school.
Maybe don't play around with those things. She's the co-conspirator now. That's actually a good plan. Print the currency of the uh, enemy country and mass to create artificial inflation. What's that? Is she a robot? Or is her voice artificial? Is that how she can change her voice? Because we hear that she's real good at changing her voice. Ah, he's a mechanicus. Hmm. Interesting. Gonna try to kill the spies, Andre and her friend. They couldn't have asked asked for a better ally than the princess herself. That much is that much is for sure. It's an interesting ship. How is she gonna get on board? And how does nobody see Andre and Beatrice? Into the vent she goes. Into the vent she goes. Classic. Oh no. Does she go into the weird pipe? Are they sisters? 
I'm willing to believe it, honestly. Gonna dive in a fuel tank or something? Water tank. Hmm. And um, okay, so she's gonna go through the pipe that's connected to the ship and get into the ship's water tank, I'm guessing. Is it water or is it fuel? If it's water, why would they need so much? Is the ship steam powered? No, it's powered by this weird green glowing uh, mineral. Now you have no choice but to join them. I mean, you have no other choice right now. <laughs> so... Cooperate. Yeah. Getting soundtrack. I really love the soundtrack of this series. I hope the movies are just as good. Because I know there is like six movies planned. One of them is already out. She's a spy, she's a pro. And she only needed to catch the glimpse of it to figure out which conversation is the most important. How can you see anything on this blueprint? I love how there's this weird sound in the background uh, of the uh, like telegraph or something. I will keep mentioning how good sound design in the series is, because it really is. There is so much of background sounds, background noise, that doesn't have to be there. That isn't there in most anime, but in this series there is. Magic orb. Couldn't have picked a better time to climb outside in the middle of a thunderstorm. Ooh. As I said. <laughs>
Perhaps don't strap yourself to a steel cable in the middle of a thunderstorm. <laughs> They're gonna see her? They're gonna see her. Beatrice or Andre? And who might you be? And it's overheating. Is it gonna explode? You're shooting your own aircraft. Just so you're aware. It didn't go well for the bomber crew in Yojo Senki. <laughs> Although I guess this ship is uh, much better armored. Is she reflecting those bullets with her magic? Well, that was a convenient plate. I think I know this voice. This dude's voice. Damn! Just casually firing a cannon on board. <laughs> Gonna repel? Oh. Uh, not repel, zipline. Who was shot? What was shot? Sanjay shot? She was shot. Burning once. It is. They are. True. Another cannon on board. What are you gonna do, Beatrice? She's gonna imitate the voice of the mayor. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. That's how spies do it. <laughs> She's a spy. That's how. Oh, that's right. There was something about proposing to Jennifer or something. Yeah. Continuity.
So parachuting with a retrograde burn from Caverite. You have a love rival then <laughs> in Andre. She lies. That's what Andre does. Okay, so they had enough cave right to cash in their fall. She is. Just make it a tea club. You meet up and you drink various kinds of tea. You're lying. You like sugar. <laughs> so that's gonna be Andre's shtick, isn't it? She's gonna constantly say the opposite. I don't mind. And who boy did was that fast? This episode like took no time at all. That's how you know you're having a good time. You don't notice the passage of time. After I'm done recording this episode, I'm gonna get myself a cup of tea. <laughs> I have oolong, I have pu'er. Or maybe just a classic... Uh, what's it called? The one with bergamot. Uh, what's this kind of tea called? Fuck, it's my favorite tea and I forgot what's it called. Mm. Shit, I, I have to Google. I have to Google it because I can't remember. Earl Grey, of course. Of course it's Earl Grey. Okay. Let's switch to this view. And... Discuss what happened in the episode. So I have to do it like this. For VLC to... Okay, VLC, what the fuck? Why won't you show frames that I'm clicking on? Uh, do I have to do something like open the file again? No. Okay, I'm gonna do like this then. I'm gonna reopen the file in a different player. And can you see it? Yes. Okay, this this player works. Pot player, if you ever wondered. All right. Getting the prologue. Meeting of Princess and Andre. And we reestablish what we established in the past uh, in the last episode that she wants to become a queen, but we also hear that there is some promise involved. Promise between Andre and the princess, I'm assuming. 
a promise that perhaps where they they were split as children. That's my assumption because Andre said that she became a spy to to be able to go across the wall. Now, question is: Are they sisters, or are they really good friends, <laughs> so to speak? They could be either, honestly, or both. Hey, you know what they say: princess, not princess. Princess is a My Little Pony term. <laughs> Incest is winces. That's the that's the correct term. They could be both. We, we could be like. Full on citrus. I don't mind either way. But yeah, there was some promise involved that the princess will apparently become the queen. That's what she promised Andre. I'm assuming, because again, we don't know everything. We don't know the whole story. What we do know is that they always wanted to get together, back together. And Andre has, um, has even a, like a house in. What, Queensland, was it? In Queensland or something. Let's run away together. Have the route planned out. Casablanca. Why did I think of Queensland? <laughs> they have a house in Casablanca. They can escape. They can live together, as they promised. But the princess is right that... With the wall gone, they can be together and it won't matter who knows it. It's a much more permanent solution. True, it's not as easy to achieve as just running away and living in Casablanca. But it will give them much more peace of mind. Right? They won't have to worry about being hunted down. They won't have to worry about being found out. They won't have to worry about changing their names and, uh, I don't know, changing their looks and always looking over their shoulder that maybe there is a spy from one of their former countries searching for them, right? So Princess is right here that it's a much more permanent solution and much better solution. But of course, much harder. We learn that this dude was killed, apparently. He was kind of supposed to be killed. So, nothing really changes there, <laughs> or, yeah, nothing really changes here. I guess it was mentioned just to tell her that, hey, people around me die, so you might want to, you know, not get involved, because it's, it's a dangerous business being a spy. And uh, now we have this moment, this beautiful light coming behind Andre, as she declares that she will deceive them all. That she will deceive the princess. That she will deceive the world. And that she will deceive even herself. And we get the OP in the perfect moment. Yeah, I think this is the moment when Andre started lying. I think just to get used to lying, right? Because as you lie, even about the smallest things, like, I like my tea with salt, then you slowly get used to lying, and it comes up easier for you, more natural. I think that's what she did. Uh, I think that's what she's doing here. Uh, that's a similar trick I heard from a psychotherapist once. When you have trouble making decisions, you suffer like analysis paralysis, and uh, you'd rather not choose than uh, have to choose, even though not choosing is worse than either choice, stuff like that. Uh, you should consciously decide about every single thing, right? I'm making a conscious decision to pick up this bottle of water and to take a sip. <laughs> Normally, you don't consciously decide about those, those things. You just pick up the water, you just drink it, you don't think anything more of it. But if you make it a decision, and if you make small things in your life decisions, slowly get used to deciding. 
I think she's going for the same thing. If you lie about the smallest things, then you slowly get used to lying, and you get better at it. It's a nice bit. It's a nice bit. I, I like it. Of course, we're getting OP. Amazing, as always. And uh, we're getting the reiteration of what we've learned in, like, the first episode, I think. Yeah, I think first episode already told us the story of uh, how the country was split by a by wall because they discovered cave right and uh, it made their military really good. Nice tender moment between Princess and Beatrice. Princess explaining that uh, an enemy of your enemy is a friend. Beatrice doesn't know that Princess and Andre have a history together. And uh, that's why Princess can be uh, certain that Andre won't betray her. Beatrice doesn't know that, so Princess has to find a different angle, a different way to uh, reassure Beatrice that she knows what she's doing at, and that she's not afraid of being betrayed. Uh, she comes in, uh, what's her name, Diane? Something? And we're going again with the Black Lizard planet. Yeah. She lies at every step. That's her shtick. And we get the uh, club room. With plenty of uh, preserved bugs. I guess it could be an uh, entomology club. This is curious. How did they how did they put it in a club room? What the fuck? Was it already there? Was it already there? Or did they get their spy renovation crew to put it in? Or <laughs> how 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 did they how did they do it? Now that's a good selection of guns, I gotta admit. There's some uh, tiny little ones, easy to conceal. There's some rifles, a cane with a gun inside, and of course the pen with a gun. Yes, they are real. Very real. And the uh, princess has no trigger discipline. The plates were stolen. And as I mentioned, that's a good plan, actually. I wonder if there is a precedent for that in, uh, in actual history. Printing the currency of an enemy country to destabilize their economy. I guess I'll have to go on like r slash ask historians or something and ask about it because I'm curious. I'm curious if there is an actual precedent for that because it's a great idea. Devilish as it is, but actually great. Requires no force, requires no like spying requires basically no risk just introduce currency into circulation and that alone can destabilize the entire country and we know that Andre is great at disguising herself and we also get this moment with Beatrice Yeah. Yeah, she has a uh, mechanical throat. I'm assuming her entire like vocal cords were replaced with it because if it was just a an additional device or something then it could probably be removed and her real voice restored. But if her entire, like, vocal cords are ripped out and she only has this voice box, then I guess it's not possible. And yeah, and we learn that uh, her, her father is of Ordo Mechanicus, <laughs> essentially. That he, uh, being fanatical about machines, he replaced his own eye with a mechanical one, it seems. His left arm is also replaced. Possessed by machines. 
was possessed by machine spirit. Possessed by the Omnissiah. And he ripped out her vocal cords and installed a voice box. You know what they say, flesh is weak, but... If a bit of flesh isn't weak, why replace it? But, there's one thing, one interesting thing that this scene establishes. It establishes that bionics, in one form or another, are a thing in this universe. Right? If someone was to lose an arm, or lose a leg, or lose an eye, a replacement can be made. Now, I don't know if it's gonna actually play any significant role uh, in further episodes, but it's nice that we have it established, because we already had established that uh, the Caverite can give you flight, and it apparently can give you the ability to walk on uh, walls. I'm assuming it provides with some modicum of control over gravity, and that's how it works. Now we also establish that bionics are a thing, and you can get like a steam-powered foot and whatnot. And that's her voice box. Entirely mechanical, and she can repair it herself. Hmm. And... Uh... Yeah, the princess was the only one who wanted to be her friend. Friend of the mechanical girl. Let's you and I be friends. That's why she's so attached to the princess. She is her only friend, it would seem. Yeah. And for some reason, she has the pen. She did take it from the princess, and I guess she, all the time, she had it on her, on herself. I think that was it. And as a princess, you can just drop in unannounced and ask for a tour of the ship. That's perfect. That's actually perfect for, uh, for spies, because they sometimes want to get a tour of the ship. And princess of the country you're spying on, being one of your spies, is the absolute best possible scenario. Pro the only better scenario would be if the actual ruler of the country was one of your spies. Which they're working on, <laughs> but it's not quite the case yet. It's a big ship, and it's some interesting design. Those are some cave right thrusters, I'm guessing. Kalingatiti from India. Okay. Thank you for telling me that. There was that uh, nice shot of the entire ship. I wonder, will I be able to find it? Or was it earlier? Yeah, those smokestacks at the top. Could it be that they really were pumping water? Because although Cave Ride can lift the ship up, act against gravity, those propellers, they need to be actually powered by steam. That's why the smokestacks, and that's why they were pumping water. I think that's it. The actual ship cannot be powered by cave right. It needs a different source of power. Cave right only allows it to float. And she uses her charms to get in. And here we have the moment between Anja and Beatrice. Beatrice tries to hit Anja with the pen. Yeah. But Anja knows that she isn't able to. Don't bother. You're an amateur. You'll never hit me. She would never be able to pull the trigger even. And even if she did, she would miss. I'm assuming, although at this distance, I think even an amateur would be able to hit, so I think what Anja means here is that you wouldn't be able to pull the trigger. And yeah, 
she's in the toilet. The best possible way to get to infiltrate the ship, to get, or rather, to get some alone time. And of course, she knows that there are vents in the ship. She gets into the vent. And now we get into the water tank. Beatrice falls after Andre. Andre tries to rescue her. I wonder why didn't Beatrice drown? It took them quite a lot of time to get out of the tank. Could it be that her voice box somehow? No, I don't think so. I don't think it acts as a, uh, as a like, oxygen source or anything like that. That's a cool looking ship. It's like World War II era destroyer, but flying. That's a cool design. That's a cool design. And that, that pushes me even further in the direction of this series being a cross between steampunk and dieselpunk. Because it's not a dieselpunk, it's not a steampunk design. Steampunk doesn't generally look like this. There's not enough brass and not enough wood. It's just steel plates and very World War II era. So it's... Yeah, it's, it's dieselpunk. But the car at the bottom, that's very much steampunk. And uh, Beatrice's voice box is very much steampunk. Clockwork, clockwork punk, I guess, is it seems to be working uh, like clockwork. They get out of the tank. Conven oh, I was thinking convenient that they were able to open it from the inside, but no. Uh, her friend, Diane, I have to check out what her name is because I don't want to call her Diane if her name isn't Diane. Uh, princess Principal. What's your name? Your name is Dorothy. And uh, I think on multiple occasions I did call her Diane. <laughs> well, she's Dorothy. Now we know that. Dorothy sneaked in to open this valve so they can get from out from the inside. That's why she had to board the, uh, the ship. Don't want me to help a spy, I would rather die. Well, as you wish. Your wish is my command. And Andre is right here. If she got caught, they would have no trouble cracking her. So it's better both for the princess and for their initiative to just kill Beatrice. But we don't kill her. Beatrice decides to cooperate. On a spur of a moment, but she decides to cooperate nonetheless. We have this audio equipment. And uh, Andre listens in to all of them. I've just completed my guard shift. Yeah. Installation and outside normal. Naval command copied that. No effect on the ship's internal gravity. So cave right does affect gravity. Yeah, now you go dream about that fiancé of yours. And I think that was actually the voice of the dude that uh, that Beatrice decided to um, to copy the voice of. Caverite Jammers has activated. Jennifer, we know the voice. Yeah, that's his voice. And we know the, vo the name of that fiancé. Uh... You're paying me back. She is listening to all of them at once. Get me number one, but she doesn't need to actually comprehend all of them. She only needs to catch the important bits. About that missing special delivery. World of Economics makes a fine battlefield. That's what tipped her off. Discussing how uh, the economics can be used for war. Prepare for arms inspection. Yeah. And we're having this... This sound in the background. This one. And something moves there, I think. 
Yeah. Yeah, something moves there and makes the sound. That's so cool. That's some great attention to detail. I love it. And something else lowers and again makes this sound. I love it. It's a little tiny thing, but really makes a difference. How can, how can she see anything on this blueprint? It just shows this structure of the ship, I think. There's no legend. Somehow she's able to read it, so... Who am I to question it? Going for the plates. Zipline. Cave right orb. And... Climbing outside in a thunderstorm is certainly not a good idea. Because you can get zapped. And knocked unconscious. Thankfully she had the zipline though. So... OSHA compliant. And of course they can see her dangling outside. That's a good design of the ship. Actually, those uh, bits here, yeah, here with windows that also allow you to see the ship itself. It's a good design because you can notice any structural failures, like bits of plating falling off, fire on the outside, stuff like that. And the smokestacks actually emit smoke, so the propellers have to be steam-powered and the cable right only allows them to manipulate gravity. I think I'm correct. And we have this dude. We have this dude whose voice I'll try to find out. More characters on Mal. Come on, come on. Is he even listed, though? Anthony Cameron, Dolly Shop, Frankie, Lily Gravestone, Gazelle. Ooh, Gazelle, I like her design. And Norman D. Cole, Oshima O'Reilly. No, I don't think his design. Uh, there's a character named Zelda, apparently. So, <laughs> that's interesting. But yeah, there's this dude. Who has the plates. And her cave right thingamajig starts breaking. Uh, that's a nice limitation to magic. You can use it only for a set amount of time before it runs out. That's actually nice. And they open the window and just shoot their machine gun at Andre. And she reactivates the cave right generator or whatever it is. And runs the wall of the ship. Is it... I thought it was burning through her dress, but no, it's burning her... Uh, it's burning her uh, glove. Yeah, it's burning through her glove, and it's actually burning her skin. So it gets real hot. She knocks off this plate. And... Apparently calculates perfectly that it's gonna hit them. She she's a mathematical and physical genius apparently. That's a cool looking gun. Kind of like a not Tommy gun, but it reminds me of some guns. Yeah, don't shoot willy nilly. And someone had a shotgun or something here, right? Yeah, we're animated on twos. That's... Yeah, he has... That's not a shotgun. That's like a grenade launcher. Kicked his gun. Yeah. And then kicked him. That's a cool smear frame. That's a cool smear on his neck. With a flip. And the grenade launcher fires. Click, click, fire. That's a nice sound design again. That click, click before firing. 
Oh, that's a cool shot. We see uh, the uh, heated up projectile. It hits the uh, the uh, parachutes, and there's no glow. For a thing, for a couple of frames, there's no glow. Then there's this brilliant flash, and then explosion. Uh, it's kind of like in animation, you have that little bit of anticipation and then movement to emphasize the movement. In here, you have no explosion, no flash, no nothing, and then brilliant flash and then explosion to, uh, to accentuate, to improve the explosion itself. Yeah. That's a cool moment. And here, I think... Yeah, the explosion actually bugs up a little bit. We explode outwards, everything on screen is burning, and then we go back in a little bit, and then we go back out. Uh, this trick, although much more exaggerated, was also used in Kill la Kill during uh, Ryuko's fight with Satsuki, when it blew all the uh, students out, then sucked them in and blew them out again. It's kind of like this. I really like this explosion. And we apparently have a cannon on board. Like, casually in the corridors. Aren't you afraid you're gonna blow a hole in the... Like, the outer wall of the ship and depressurize it? I guess they aren't afraid of that. The zipline. And, uh, yeah, Beatrice decides to... Take the zipline, because otherwise she's going to be killed or captured. That doesn't help Anjay, though, <laughs> because she's still tethered. It would have probably been a good idea to untether yourself. Kind of a wonder that she didn't tangle herself up during the fight, still having this, uh, this steel cable attached to her. Beatrice gets in, and Andrzej has been uh, shot, and just blasted, really, into the wall. When you're dead, it's all over. Beatrice is right. Andrzej is too much of a spy to care about it, or rather, she cares about the princess too much. Because if she gets captured, she can be linked to the princess, right? They saw each other at the ball. Uh, they were cr classmates, apparently, and whatnot, so princess could get in trouble. Yeah, I will not let that happen. And now we're getting the special power of Beatrice. Yeah. Her voice box can uh, apparently create other voices. And she can apparently control it without any sort of tools, without anything. I don't think there are any buttons on this voice box or anything like that. I guess she can just do it. And we should just accept it. That she can do it. I have no trouble accepting that, actually. Magic technology. At a certain level of advancement, there is no difference between them. The other day... Yeah. Gang proposed to Jennifer. Yeah, being a spy is uh, remembering all those tiny little tidbits of information that can be used later. As we can see, what's wrong with my shirt? As we can see, those tidbits of information can actually be used and are actually useful. Yeah, heard his voice back at the switchboard. And now we are. Parachuting down, and we have Beatrice pro uh, profess, I think that's the correct word, profess her love for the princess, and her desire to keep her safe. And Anjay screams that she hates this stupid princess, but we all know that she lies. She lies all the time, so... She loves the princess. She also professes her love for the princess, and I'm happy. I'm happy about it, 
because I might be saying it too early, but I don't think it's Yuri Bait. I think it's like actual children I. At least I hope so. At least I hope so. That there's not gonna be like, oh, we are best friends forever moment. <laughs> I really hope so. What's it listed as? As at Mal, by the by. Is it listed as Shoujo Ai? It's listed as Action Mystery Historical. Okay. Well, let's say I believe you. Let's say I believe you. Although Mal usually doesn't have many, uh, many tags. I'm gonna check out. Mm. I'm gonna check out. No, 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 no. Wrong click. Wrong click. Uh, Princess Principal on, like, any list. They always have more tags. Princess Principal... Any list. Let's see. Espionage, female protagonist, steampunk, foreign urban fantasy, episodic, historical, guns, assassins, anti hero, school, kudere. 77% Yuri. I'm perfectly fine with 77%. That's more than we usually get. Cave right. Bursts, but just in time. They are safe on the ground, on someone's pasture. Probably in Wales. She is very much a liar. And I thought, no, that's not the ending time yet. We're going back to school. Right, we became friends because of our common fondness of whiskey. Dorothy. Her name is Dorothy. I'll have to remember that. And suddenly... Andre and Beatrice are friends. Yeah. And I like how we don't call it out. How nobody at the table calls it out like, Hey, when did you become such a good friends? Or anything like that. No, they just give... They just give this kind of look. We know what that look means. It doesn't need spelling out. Right? They are a little bit... Maybe not shocked. But they are a little bit interested. Like, what happened? Right? And their, their facial expressions uh, convey that perfectly. There doesn't need to be any words. Yeah, no words need to be... Yeah. Do, do you have any idea what happened? No, I, I have no clue. And that's all we need. That's all we need. Yeah, they just... Yeah. They just, out of nowhere, became good friends. I love it. Okay. That was a really good episode. It really was. Uh, each consecutive episode is better than the other, it seems. <laughs> because we got some character moments, some really nice character moments, some real nice uh, character development, both in Andre and in Beatrice. Uh, we got the development of the relationship. We even got some implied character development of the princess. We didn't see her how she was before, but we can um, we can assume how she was before, and we can assume that the princess uh, that is now is uh, is developed from the way she was before. Really like that. I really really like that. The art, of course. Great as always, the designs are stellar, the sound design... Uh, eventually I will stop mentioning it. No, I won't, because there will always be something that catches my ear and that something that needs mentioning. We get some nice background. Uh, maybe not some nice background, but... Um, the background of the story 
gets expanded a little bit, right? Now we know there's a promise. We know that Andre and Princess were very close with each other. Um, we get some background on Beatrice. We get background on uh, Beatrice's uh, relationship with the princess. We establish some things about the world, about its technology. We know that Cave Ride is able to control gravity, but it's not... Uh, it's not able to be used as a source of energy, apparently. We also know that uh, prosthetics are a thing, very advanced prosthetics, because we've seen both a prosthetic eye and a prosthetic arm, like fully functional prosthetic arm in operation. I wonder, again, I wonder if it's gonna come into play. I wonder if maybe... Maybe the Shinobi girl will have her legs replaced with mechanical ones or something, and that's what allows her for such great agility or something like that. Would be be kind of nice to see um, to see all those things we have established uh, expanded upon a little bit, used a little bit more. So that it's not just an offhand mention that, oh yeah, prosthetics are a thing, we're not going to use prosthet prosthetics again. It's just Beatrice that has an artificial voice box, and uh, and that's it. Not, nothing more, there's no other consequence for this technology existing. I hope it's not, it, I hope it's not going to be the case. I hope we're actually going to do something more about it. Anything else that's worth mentioning? Well, we establish uh, how they got their uh, their club room, and that they're gonna masquerade as a club. And again, I can't help but wonder when will the when will we see the shinobi girl, and uh, how will we meet her? Maybe she will try to like join the club because she thinks it's a legitimate club. And they take her in, and she learns about their secrets, and it turns out that she has a goal of her own that spies can help accomplish. Or is she sent here by the central command to help them, or what's her deal? I hope we're gonna learn about it in maybe the next episode. In this episode, we learned a lot about Beatrice. In the future episode... I think we will either learn about the girl whose name starts with D, and it's not Diana. I have to check her name again. God damn it. Dorothy. 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 The next episode will either be about Dorothy, I feel. Or we will actually meet the Shinobi girl. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder. I think the first, like, six episodes will be spent building up the team, building up the world, and the latter six episodes will be spent on actual plot, progressing the actual plot. That's my prediction, at least. I don't know how accurate it is. We'll see. We'll see, and I cannot wait until we see. I really cannot wait until uh, I see episode 4. I will see it next week. And I can't wait until next week. <laughs> I honestly can't. Uh, Princess Principal is like the highlight of my week, honestly. It's such a great show. It's such a great show, and it's a pity that from what I've seen, there aren't all that many people who've seen it, for some reason. Or at least I don't see many people mention it. I don't see many reactions to it on YouTube. I think my reaction series is one of very few. I'll have to look it up though. Maybe. Maybe I'll join the Patreon of some reaction channels and suggest them <laughs> they watch Princess Principle because this show needs more recognition. That's for sure. And I'm super happy that there are movies. I I really am because those... Six movies, each is like 50 minutes or so. They basically make up another 12 episode season. And I can't wait until, uh, until I get the chance to bite into those movies. But first, we have to finish the season 
one and only so far, and I've already been rambling for over an hour. So let's finish this. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve. Comment down below what you thought of my reaction, what you thought of this episode, what are your predictions, uh, what I misinterpreted, maybe. Maybe you noticed something I didn't, maybe I noticed something you didn't, tell me about that as well, because why not? Subscribe if you, are, if you want to be notified of future episodes, and if you want to watch Princess Principal one week early, join my Patreon, support me there, you also get access to Discord server and all other nice things like this, and uh, I can later use that money to buy myself a better camera, because I'm using a phone, as I mentioned, on many occasions. So, that's gonna be it from me for today. Do all the good stuff, guys, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers.